Today's presenters are Joy Chaudhry and Yiting Liu. Joy graduated from Turo University College of Pharmacy, receiving her PharmD degree. Yiting graduated from the University of California, San Francisco College of Pharmacy, also receiving her PharmD degree. So today we're going to talk about uh, medication safety. Uh, we know many of you guys are uh, caregivers of your loved ones. So uh, we're going to mainly focus on our talk on providing you with important tips and tools on how to uh, manage your loved ones' medications. So here is an overview of the talk. Um, so we're going to provide you with tips on how to better understand your medication or your loved one's medications, um, how to keep a complete medication list, and the importance of doing that. We will also talk about medication reconciliation and the importance of doing that. And we will also talk about how to prevent medication-related problems. And Last, lastly, but not least, we will provide you with a uh, list of resources that can, you can use when you have questions on your loved one's medications. So first, I will talk about how to better understand your medications or your loved one's medications. So understanding uh, your loved one's medications well is the first step of safely using medications. So uh, there, are, um, there are common problems associated with medication use among elderly. Um, one of them is um, the use of multiple mo medications at the same time. And uh, this is often referred to as polypharmacy. Research has shown that the more medications a person takes, um, the greater the risk of um, him or her experiencing a medication-related problem. Um, so those problems may include um, uh, not uh, forgetting to give a medication to your loved ones on time because there are just so many medications you need to manage, or you um, not really understanding like the most correct way of giving your medications, and that happens a lot to our patients. So as our as a pharmacist, we really want you to uh, really understand uh, the medication that you or your loved ones are taking, so that we can practice medication use. Safely. So um, here's um, so here's are some uh, some things that uh, I think it's uh, important for you to know about your medication or your loved one's medication. In this slide and in the next two slides, um, this uh, I list a couple a number of things that uh, you want to know about your medication. So first, you want to know the name of your medication, right? And then you also want to know uh, the indication of your loved one's medication, um, why your loved one, loved one is on this medication. So uh, the importance of doing that is because um, knowing why your loved one is on this medication can really help you to understand the importance of your loved one taking this medication. I've seen a lot of patients who are not understanding why they are on certain medications, so they frequently forgot uh, to take their medications. So. Um, as a consequence, their condition got worse because of that, uh, unfortunately. So it is very important to know why you or your loved one is on a certain medication. And thirdly, you want to know how to take a medication or how to give a medication to your loved ones. Um, for example, you want to know the correct dosage, meaning how much of the medication you want to give each time, how many pills, how many tablets, how many capsules. If it's a liquid medication, you want to know how many uh, teaspoons or how many milliliters you want to give each time. Um, and secondly, you want to know how frequent your loved one need to take this medication, whether it's once a day or twice a day or three times a day, etc. 
You also want to know how long your loved one need to be on medication, uh, on a certain medication, right? Um, there are some medications that your loved one, loved one need to be on chronically. Uh, those may include uh, blood pressure medications or uh, diabetes medications. But there are certain medications that um, you don't have to be on it chronically. For example, um, antibiotics, right? Uh, we use antibiotics to treat infection. Once the infection is gone, you are done with the medication or your loved one is done with the medication. So um, you don't want them to take it forever. So you want to know how long your loved one need to be on certain medications. Also, you wanted to know how to store a medication. Uh, for most of the medication, we want to avoid moisture uh, and also wanted to avoid excessive heat. Um, and for certain medication, there are special requirements, special uh, storage requirements. For example, some medications require to be kept in the uh, original manufacturer container. So in this case, you wouldn't want to put them in your pill box, right? Um, you also want to know the expiration, expiration time of your medication, and you also want to know how many refills are uh, left on your prescription or your loved one's prescription. This is very important because um, when um, the refill number gets low, it's a good time for you to call your loved one's physician to remind them to prescribe more refills to, um, to your loved one so that um, he or she won't um, uh, run out of the medication. Um, a few more things. Um, some medications has uh, special uh, instructions on how to take them. So like an inhaler or a patch. So uh, you want to know how to um, administer or how to give this those kind of medication to your loved ones as well. Uh, you also want to know the possible side effects of the medications. And lastly, um, there are medications that can interact with other medications or food or common food that we usually take. So uh, you want to know if there's any other medications or food that your loved one need to be avoided uh, during their, um, while they are on this medication. And very importantly, whenever you have a question, make sure you ask. Okay, so uh, never be afraid to ask questions. Um, we, as pharmacists, we really want you to uh, really fully understand your medication or loved one's medication. You don't have to understand every single aspect, but make sure you understand the important aspect that I just mentioned above. And we also want you to feel comfortable managing your loved one's medications. So um, if you have question, uh, you can ask your physician or your loved one's physician during a visit, or you can simply go to your local pharmacy to ask your pharmacist. So again, whenever you have a question, do not feel hesitant to ask. Um, next, I will talk about um, how to keep a complete medication list. Just to um, briefly talk about what is a medication list. It's a complete, um, it's a complete list records all of your or your loved one's prescription medications, those prescribed your, by your loved one's physicians. And it also has all the over-the-counter medications, those you can purchase from local pharmacy. And it also should contain all the supplements and the herbals that your loved ones is taking. Um, and you may want to ask what should be recorded on medication list, right? So uh, you want to put down the name of the medication. Uh, you want to put down the indication, which is uh, why your uh, loved one need to be on this medication, the dosage, the frequency, the prescribing physician's name and contact information. Um, this is important because um, in case a, another physician or another um, um, healthcare professional need to contact the original prescribing doctor. Um, this is a very useful information for them. You may also want to put the date the medication was started, how long your loved one need to be on this medication, and also you may want to put the date the medication was, I mean the medication list was last updated. 
the whole reason of uh, recommending you guys um, carry a complete medication list for your loved one is because first, um, this is a very good tool to uh, keep updated on your loved one's medication, uh, what they are taking right now. and. Uh, secondly, you can bring this um, medication list to your uh, loved one's doctor uh, during a visit so that they can review what the medications they are taking or your loved ones is taking. Um, they can assess whether uh, he or she still need to be on those medications, uh, if there's anything that need to be added or if there's anything that need to be um, discontinued or eliminated. And also, um, when if your loved ones uh, came to the hospital, it's also a very good tool for our uh, doctors and physicians here to uh, get a better idea of your loved one's medical condition. So that's why it is very important to um, uh, to uh, continue to update uh, the medication list on a regular basis and carry it with. Um, carry it with you or with your loved ones during a doctor visit or came to the hospital. Um, and, um, and next, Joy is going to talk to you about medication reconciliation. Thank you. Good evening. So as Yiting mentioned, my name is Joy Chaudhry. I am one of the residents that's here at the pharmacy. And tonight I'm actually going to talk to you about the medication and a little bit more, so reconciliation. What does this mean? What is medication reconciliation? So this is an opportunity that Yiting said where you can actually bring the list that you have that's complete, that's great, to the doctor to make sure that there is nothing missed and that everything is accurate and up to date. So you want to make sure that everything is on there is appropriate and that you want to continue with it. Um, updated lists can help you. So if you go to multiple doctors, which happens a lot, or sometimes even go to pharmacies or hospital visits, it can make sure that there's no duplications in the drugs. It can make sure that, let's say you're going to one doctor's office and they want to start a therapy, but when they see the medication list, they realize it was started by another doctor. So that way there's no potential for in duplications in the therapy. Um, sometimes dosing of the medications may need to be increased or the doctor thought it was increased previously but it wasn't or vice versa. The medication is actually supposed to be decreased and it was not. So having that medication on there can help you avoid the wrong dosage being given, making sure that you're avoiding any potential interactions so, and also that nothing is missed. So that includes having the over-the-counter medications, even something like Advil can be added on there. And sometimes certain health conditions, you don't want to take Advil. So having a complete list, even things that you use over the counter or supplements, herbal things are very good to add. So that way nothing is missed with the doctors. So once you get the medication list and it's complete, so like I said, bringing it to the doctor's office is great. You can also ask your pharmacist if they can do a medication reconciliation, where they can actually sit down with you and talk about what each medication is used for and what to expect from it. So pharmacists are a great resource, and they actually can be there at some of the health fairs. They do a med reconciliation or also a brown bag event, where you bring in your home medications, and they'll go over each one with you and go over any questions you have about it. They also can be done at some of the pharmacies. So Walgreens, CVS, things like that, they can offer medication reconciliation. Might not be at each site, but they can direct you maybe to which one does offer that. The other thing is to make sure you try to get the medications filled at the same pharmacy if you're not offered a medication reconciliation. So that allows the pharmacist, they get a database and they can check for interactions. So in case something gets missed by the doctor, when the pharmacist has a complete profile list of the medications, they can make sure that if there's something that shouldn't be dosed that way with another medication, or maybe it's going to cause another medication to increase the side effects. So they can check with the doctor before your loved one even gets that medication. So having this list is very important, as we keep saying. One of the things is that, let's say something happens. Unfortunately, if anything was to happen to any of your loved ones, it's a panic situation. You're very stressed out. 
and you have to go to the hospital. If they have to get admitted, we love it if you can bring in the medication list because that lets us make sure that your loved one doesn't miss any medications during a stressful, confusing period of time. So we do multiple drug, uh, it's called medication reconciliation, so you'll get asked by a nurse, you'll get asked by a pharmacist or a technician because they wanna make sure that the medications taken at home are not missed or dropped off while they're in the hospital. So this list is very great if it's accurate and up to date. That way, let's say Parkinson's medication, those should not be missed. One dose can have an adverse reaction where the patient, your loved one's gonna start getting the symptoms. So having that list as soon as possible, or if there's multiple caregivers, like maybe you, someone else in your family is helping, everybody having the list is a great idea. And up to date is best. So once the medications, you have a bunch on board, it can lead to, as Yi Ting was saying, increased side effects because you can have medications that are causing same side effects and they're kind of an additive effect to them. So you wanna make sure that you know what you're doing with the medications. So make sure what they're used for, remembering when to take it, um, making sure that it's being able to be administered appropriately. Are you the one giving the medication to them? Is your loved one able to open the bottle? Can they open the bottle if it's a safety cap? Um, injections, so insulin, things like that. Can you provide it appropriately or can they administer it? Inhalers. Inhalers require a proper technique of timing when you press down and inhale. Sometimes that's very hard for people to manage. So things like nebulizers, that can help somebody get the appropriate medication without having that issue of timing. So make sure that also if there's any issues with getting the medication at the pharmacy level, that the doctor is aware of it. So the pharmacy contacts the doctor, but it's also great if you as the caregiver calls the doctor and asks them, should we continue this? Should we do something else while waiting? Maybe there's something with the insurance. Maybe there's an error on the prescription. But if you involve the, care, you're the doctor with what's going on, they can make sure that no therapy is left off that shouldn't be waited on. So we were talking about some of the challenges that can come with the medications. So understanding is great. Creating a schedule, a daily routine, can help make sure that you don't miss the medications. So making sure that you have a pill box. Maybe there's morning, afternoon, lunch, and bedtime. Uh, making sure you use alarms on the phone in case you're not at home so that you can remember to give the medication if you're out and about. A calendar is great for things like Alendronate, which is gonna be used for osteoporosis. It's once a week. Sometimes some of the meds are even once a month. So those are hard to remember. But if you have a calendar that you can put on there, that way you remember to be, it to be given on that date. When you pick up the medication for your loved one originally, make sure you know how to use it. Should this be uh, kept in the refrigerator? Should this be kept out? If it's kept out, how long is it good for? Um, ask lots of questions. Ask them to demonstrate. If it's inhaler, ask them, open up the package, ask them, do you have to click, prime, do multiple things. A lot of them have different steps. So always ask for demonstrations. Even at the doctor's office, a lot of the nurses know how to give injections and they can actually teach you or your loved one how to administer insulin. And it can help you if there's any problems. Maybe an insulin pin will be better than the vial because it just allows you to click instead of drawing up the insulin. So knowing ahead of time can help you overcome any of the problems to administering the medication. So side effects, we talked about knowing the medication. You knowing the side effects of the medication can help you determine, is it something that's expected? Do we, is this a normal side effect? So nausea, diarrhea, we expect those with some antibiotics. But what about shortness of breath? That's something major. That's something you start getting that you want to get medical attention. And knowing what point you need to contact the doctor or seek urgent care or something, is a great thing to know for the medications. So you wanna make sure also if a side effect does occur, if they do get nauseous, maybe they could take it with food. Or let's say your loved one gets tired. Can this be taken at night or vice versa? It keeps them up. Can they take it in the morning? Knowing what side effects can help you prevent um, adverse drug reactions from happening. Another thing to keep in mind is that 
follow-up appointments are really critical when things are first started. So when you start first managing a disease state with your loved one, knowing when to follow up with a doctor can help make sure that things are adjusted appropriately. Getting the proper lab work is good. So are any of you familiar with warfarin? Mm -hmm. So one of the things is that needs constant monitoring with lab values. They're going to look at something called INR, international um, ratio of the how thin the blood is. So you, each patient has a goal. If you're too high, you're at risk of bleeds. But if you're too low, you're at risk of clots. So it's very important that if you get lab work ordered for the medications, that you get that lab work. So that way we can safely make sure the medications are doing what they're supposed to. So what happens if you forget something? There's a lot of information. If there's more drugs, that means more information to remember. What if you see a side effect, but you're not sure if that's normal or something you need to be concerned about? So anytime you get a new medication, or if you're just not sure, you can ask um, either the doctor or the pharmacist for a printout information sheet about the medication. You can keep that on file for yourself to always refer back to. You can ask them ahead of time about any potential interactions that you should watch out for. If you have any changes, make sure to make it's crystal clear. Clarify, ask repeatedly, so that way there is no mistakes with it. And then once again, the side effects. Is it normal or should you be concerned? If you want to look it up yourself, there is a lot of things online that allow you to do it. So drugs.com has information, senior care pharmacist, American Geriatrics, and the FDA are all drug resources. You also have things like WebMD or the pharmacy.u Maryland that can provide a disease state. So it kind of helps you understand what is going on, how the medications work within that to help your loved one get better. Okay? So I want to say thank you for your time tonight, and we will take any questions that you have now.